Hello everyone, in this video we are going to study about oogenesis, the formation of graphene follicle and corpus luteum. The female gonad is the ovary. It has an outer part called the cortex and an inner part, the medulla. The cortex contains many large round cells called oogonia. All the oogonia to be used throughout the fertile life of a woman are produced at a very early stage possibly before birth and do not multiply thereafter. In the late fetal period, primary oogonia enlarge to form primary oocyte. At the time of birth, all primary oocytes are in the prophase of first meiotic division. These primary oocytes remain in the prophase until they begin to mature and are ready to ovulate. With each menstrual cycle, a few primary oocytes begin to mature and complete the first meiotic division shortly before ovulation. The first meiotic division of a primary oocyte produces two unequal daughter cells. Each daughter cell has the haploid number of chromosomes. The large cell which receives most of the cytoplasm is called the secondary oocyte and the smaller cell is known as the first polar body. The secondary oocyte immediately enters the second meiotic cell division. Ovulation takes place while the oocyte is in metaphase. The secondary oocyte remains in the metaphase till fertilization occurs. The second meiotic division is completed only if fertilization occurs. This division results in two unequal daughter cells. The smaller daughter cell is called the second polar body. If fertilization does not occur, the secondary oocyte fails to complete the second meiotic division and degenerates in about 24 hours after ovulation. In each menstrual cycle, 5 to 30 primary oocytes start maturing but only one of them reaches maturity and is ovulated. The remaining degenerate. Formation of ovarian follicle the oogonia are surrounded by other cells that form the stroma. These stromal cells form ovarian or graphene follicles that surround ova and protect them. The stages in the formation of a follicle. Some cells of the stroma become flattened and surround an oocyte. These flattened cells ultimately form the ovarian follicle and are therefore called follicular cells. The flattened follicular cells become columnar. Follicles up to this stage of development are called primordial follicles. A homogeneous membrane, the zona pellucida, appears between the follicular cells and the oocyte. The follicular cells proliferate to form several layers. These constitute the membrana granulosa. The cells may now be called granulosa cells. The cavity appears within the membrana granulosa. With its appearance, a follicle is formed. The cavity of the follicle rapidly increases in size. As a result, the wall of follicle becomes relatively thin. The oocyte now lies eccentrically in the follicle surrounded by some granulosa cells that are given the name cumulus euphoricus. The cells that attach it to the wall of the follicle are given the name discus prolegaris. As the follicle expands, stromal cells surrounding the membrana granulosa become condensed to form a covering called theca interna. The cells of theca interna later secrete a hormone called estrogen and they are then called the cells of the thecal gland. Outside the theca interna, some fibrous tissue become condensed to form another covering for the follicle called the theca externa. The ovarian follicle is now fully formed. Both the oocyte and the surrounding follicular cells are dependent on each other for the further development. The follicular cells secrete meiotic inhibitory factors which prevent primary oocytes from maturing beyond the prophase of the first meiotic division. These inhibitory factors are transmitted to the oocyte via gap junctions present between microvilli of oocyte and of follicular cells. Follicular cells are also responsible for growth, metabolism and maturation of oocytes. Oocytes are responsible for proliferation and differentiation of follicular cells and help in the maturation of graphene follicles. Ovulation The shedding of the ovum from the ovary is called ovulation. 
The ovarian follicle is at first very small compared to the thickness of the cortex of the ovary. As it enlarges, it becomes so big that it not only reaches the surface of the ovary but also forms a bulging in this situation. Ultimately, the follicle ruptures and the ovum is shed from the ovary. Structure of the ovum The ovum that is shed from the ovary is not fully mature. It is in fact a secondary oocyte that is in the metaphase of second meiotic division. At this stage, the ovum is surrounded by zona pellucida. No nucleus is seen as the nuclear membrane has dissolved for the second meiotic division. A spindle is however present. Between the cell membrane and the zona pellucida, a distinct perivitelline space is seen. The first polar body lies in this space. Some cells of the corona radiata can be seen sticking to the outside of the zona pellucida. Corpus luteum When the follicle ruptures, its wall collapses and becomes folded. At this stage, the follicular cells are small and rounded. They now rapidly enlarge. As they increase in size, their walls press against those of the neighboring cells so that the cells acquire a polyhedral shape. Their cytoplasm becomes filled with a yellow pigment called lutein. They now are called luteal cells. The presence of this yellow pigment gives the structure a yellow color that is why it is called the corpus luteum or yellow body. Corpus luteum secretes progesterone. This secretion has to be poured into the blood. Thus, when the corpus luteum is forming, blood vessels from theca interna invade it and provide it with a rich supply of blood. If the ovum is not fertilized, the corpus luteum persists for about 14 days. During this period, it secretes progesterone. It remains relatively small and is called the corpus luteum of menstruation. At the end of its functional life, it degenerates and forms a mass of fibrous tissue called the corpus albicans or white body. If the ovum is fertilized and pregnancy results, the corpus luteum persists for 3 to 4 months. This is larger than the corpus luteum of menstruation and is called the corpus luteum of pregnancy. The corpus luteum of pregnancy may occupy one third to half of the total volume of the ovary. The progesterone secreted by it is essential for the maintenance of pregnancy in the first few months. After the fourth month, the corpus luteum is no longer needed as the placenta begins to secrete progesterone. Degeneration of corpus luteum in the early months of pregnancy is prevented by human chorionic gonadotropin secreted by the trophoblast cells of the developing embryo. The cells of theca interna proliferate to form the interstitial glands, also called the corpora atretica. These glands are believed to secrete estrogen. The series of changes that begin with the formation of an ovarian follicle and end with the degeneration of corpus luteum constitute what is called an ovarian cycle. An ovarian cycle has an average duration of 28 days with ovulation occurring at mid-cycle that is on the 14th day.